everybody. Welcome back to our series on fluoroscopy procedures. In this video, we will discuss the conditions surrounding and procedures associated with a small bowel follow-through. There are specific anatomies typically visualized in a small bowel follow-through. Let's do a quick overview. The duodenum, which is the first part of the small intestine. The duodenum is C-shaped and sometimes referred to as the C-loop. The duodenum is responsible for the continued breakdown of food with the aid of enzymes and bile. Nutrient absorption also begins in the duodenum. The jejunum, which is the second part of the small intestine. The jejunum is mainly responsible for absorbing nutrients such as carbohydrates and proteins. On a diagnostic image, the jejunum has a delicate, feathery appearance. The ileum, which is the third part of the small intestine. The ileum completes nutrient absorption, which includes vitamins and bile acids. The terminal ileum, which is the last part of the ileum before the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve, which is located at the junction of the small and large intestines. The ileocecal valve prevents backflow and regulates the passage of material into the large intestine. In some cases, the colon may also be visible. The colon is responsible for reabsorbing fluids and electrolytes and transporting waste material to the rectum for elimination. Indications for a small bowel follow-through include, but are not limited to, abdominal pain, diarrhea, weight loss, iron deficiency, anemia, precap, endoscopy, recent bowel surgery, or Crohn's disease, also called regional enteritis. Contraindications to a small bowel follow-through with barium include, but are not limited to, high-grade distal small bowel obstruction, suspected perforation, and barium contrast media allergy. Radiologist and RRA assessment of the small bowel may assist in the diagnosis of the following conditions. Obstruction, stricture, anatomic abnormality, diverticular masses, motility disorders, mucosal abnormalities, and inflammation. A small bowel follow-through is a single contrast study. Contrast used for a small bowel follow-through includes Intero VU 24%, which is a thicker consistency and enhances diagnostic evaluation of the small bowel mucosal pattern. Thin barium can be used, which is a powder mixed with water to the consistency needed, or water-soluble contrast can be used, which is typically used in post-surgical cases or if perforation or obstruction is suspected. Water-soluble contrast can be absorbed by the body, so if there is a perforation and the water-soluble contrast leaks into the peritoneum, the body can absorb it. Or if the patient is going to surgery, water-soluble contrast can be easily removed and aspirated from the bowel. Whereas if barium leaks into the peritoneum, it's difficult to remove and the body does not absorb it. A small bowel follow-through can be done independently or in combination with an upper GI study. A small bowel follow-through takes, on average, between two to five hours. Prone radiographs of the abdomen are commonly taken every 15 to 30 minutes. The time in between images can vary with patient anatomy and radiologist or RRA preference. The patient will wait in a waiting area or be asked to walk around in between images to keep the contrast moving through the intestines. Let's discuss the room setup for a small bowel follow-through. Supplies needed for this procedure include the contrast, either barium or water-soluble contrast. If the contrast is going to be administered through a nasogastric tube or an orogastric tube, additional supplies may be needed, such as a 60 milliliter syringe to drop the contrast and a Christmas tree adapter, which will fit flush into the port of the nasogastric tube or the orogastric tube. A spot compression paddle will also be needed for the radiologist or RRA to press on the small bowel to separate the bowel loops and visualize the terminal ileum or area of interest. Here are some of the duties that will need to be performed for a small bowel follow-through. Interview the patient by obtaining a thorough patient history. Verify allergies and verify that the exam prep was performed. Verify pregnancy status if applicable. Have the patient change. While the patient is changing, mix up the contrast. Set your technique on the control panel and place the table in the horizontal position. Bring the patient in the room and, if required, obtain a scout KUB before administering contrast media. Have the radiologist or RRA check the scout image prior to contrast administration 
and to verify the protocol to be used for the exam. Let's discuss correct radiographic positioning for a small bowel follow-through. To correctly position a patient, follow your facility's protocol for overhead and serial imaging. Typically, small bowel follow-throughs are performed prone unless the patient is unable to be placed in that position. The exam is complete when contrast opacifies the ileocecal valve and reaches the cecum. At this time, fluoroscopic spot images may be performed. On a PA or AP view of the abdomen, it's important to include the entire small bowel on the image. If a PA view is performed, the stomach and small bowel will have a compressed appearance due to the patient's body weight separating the small bowel loops. This can be useful for assessing the small bowel mucosa. Be sure to annotate the image so there is documentation of contrast progression. When positioning a patient for a PA or AP view of the abdomen, the midsagittal plane should be centered to the grid. The central ray is perpendicular to the midpoint of the image receptor. For early imaging of the small bowel, the central ray should be at L2. For delayed imaging of the bowel, the central ray should be centered at the level of the iliac crest. Once the contrast reaches the ileocecal valve, the patient is brought into a fluoroscopy room for terminal ileum or TI imaging. The radiologist or RRA will commonly use a compression paddle or F spoon to compress and separate the bowel for clear imaging of the TI and ileocecal valve. The terminal ileum or TI is the most distal segment of the small bowel. The TI is located just before the small bowel's connection with the colon through the ileocecal valve. It is of particular interest since a number of infectious and inflammatory processes involve that section of the small bowel. There are some special cases we should consider. A nasogastric tube or orogastric tube may be used when performing a small bowel follow-through when administering contrast through an NG tube or an OG tube. For these procedures, always obtain a scout KUB first. Have the radiologist assess the location of the tube tip prior to use to ensure patient safety. It is important that the tip of the catheter is in the correct location prior to injecting contrast through. A percutaneous jejunal tube also may be utilized during a small valve follow-through. Procedures utilizing these tubes are commonly performed with water-soluble contrast to evaluate tube patency or retraction. If tube patency is already known and confirmed, dilute thin barium can be used to better evaluate the small valve mucosal pattern. Another special case is a study for enterocolitis, which is called enteroclysis. These procedures may be performed by administering contrast through a nasogastric tube or oral gastric tube, where the tip of the tube is at the level of the duodenal bulb, or ligament of trites. In this study, the tube bypasses the stomach. Contrast is administered through the tube, and serial imaging is performed until the contrast reaches the colon. Additionally, with regards to pediatric imaging, a small bowel follow-through may be performed on a pediatric patient to assess for anatomic abnormalities, such as small bowel malrotation, obstruction, stenosis, or diverticulum.